Dear friends, dear viewers, welcome to my channel again, to this channel for mathematics and science. Do I say science, but it is largely tilted toward mathematics. That's my subject. But here, uh, today is a very special day. This is celebrated world over as Darwin Day. Because on 12 February in 1809, Charles Darwin, the great Charles Darwin, who gave us the theory of natural selection, evolution by natural selection, whose theory which we know along with that of Alfred Russell Wallace whose 200 years were celebrated in this channel. So I want to wish you all a happy Darwin's day. Since I've already spoken a bit about Wallace and not spoke about Darwin, so maybe many biologists who might have watched this channel might have got angry. So Darwin had wrote this uh, good book, a great set of books. So I have some of them. So it's kind of a historical collection. Everybody knows about his origin of species, right? And the interesting fact is that the major difference between Wallace and Darwin was that Darwin had done his science by analogy to begin with. And many science is done by analogy. In mathematics, for example, I look at a proof of a particular theorem. And if I want to prove a theorem, with, sim with, with, with similar conditions, but maybe slightly by and by slightly change the condition. I want to imitate the proof of the previous theorem and see whether I can fit in here and do it through that. So the analogy that Darwin took was artificial breeding, which is done by breeders that you breed pigeons, you breed different types of dogs. And you know that like, all the breeds, the dogs that you see that uh, we, which we are so people are so fond of, the various breeds of dogs, they are artificially bred by breeders. So he said that if in breed, if we as human beings can breed animals and make so much changes in them, starting from certain parental breed, that what can happen with nature being all powerful? and natural processes acting over a huge period of time. Time, unimaginable time was the key. With huge time in hand, anything possibly can happen. That was the idea. So he said, if this is this can be done, so, so, so then nature is also having carrying out some process. And that is the process of natural selection through which animals and plants and other life forms has appeared on Earth. So as you know that many of you who have watched this channel would know that Darwin went on a, his famous voyage. He was a field biologist on the uh, surveying vehicle called HMS Beagle, which was surveying the coast of South America. And they went to several strange islands with habit, inhabited by strange people and then also to the island of Galapagos. So that adventure is given in this book. The Voyage of the Beagle. They are all published by Penguin, Penguin Classics, available through Amazon. Of course, this famous book, which everybody knows, is Charles Darwin on the origin of the species. And this is known, this is the first edition done, uh, done by Penguin. And there's a beautiful um, foreword introduction by Andrew Berry, who is an authority both on Darwin and Wallace. Darwin was always interested in man, like we all are. When Oh, how, he was worried about our own existence. Where did we come from? So can evolution, can, are we product of nat natural processes? Obviously, as a man of science, he thought that we've been also part of nature. Our existence should, should be explained through natural processes. So then finally in 1871, came the Charles Darwin's famous The Descent of Man. The origin of species been in 1859. And the Wallace story is there. If you go to my uh, 200 years of Wallace celebration, I'll, I'll tell you a little about that story. And another of his book is amazing, is which has given rise to a new subject, a part of psychology called evolutionary psychology, called the expression of emotions in man and animals. He was studying the emotions in man very carefully. Actually, he was looking at his own children. He used to pick his, he used to poke his daughter when she, who unfortunately died uh, at the age of ten. When she was very small, he used to poke him and po poke her and play, f have fun with her and try to see her emotions. And then the last book is his book on his autobiographies. I mean, it is 
about his own life in his own language but uh, now to in, in order to celebrate this great man i will read the last paragraph very small paragraphs from both of his book and this book the origin of species can be considered even as a piece of literature as david attenborough sir david attenborough the great uh, naturalist and the bbc famous bbc photo the filmmaker on wildlife had also said that he would take that he admires darwin because you take the origin of species and start reading it and it things make sense so he not only made sense as the attenborough says of the natural world but he provided a mechanism and wrote so beautifully about it so here every student of science should actually uh, know this beautiful line which is a piece of literature which is not just a uh, uh, piece of great uh, science was piece of literature there is grandeur in this view of life with its several powers having been originally bred into forms into a few forms or into one and that while this planet has gone cycling according to the fixed law of gravity from so simple a beginning endless forms most beautiful most and most wonderful have been and are being evolved and this thing has been used by biologists by, by various writers at many many times they had tried to write use this as a kind of analogy in their various writings one might not be very happy to hear what he says about man but unfortunately the every scientific evidence piles up in favor of this so so this uh, is uh, what uh, he says just i wanted to read this little part of the last part of this book uh, where is it gone it's very difficult to figure out such things just just give me a second here it is man may be excused for feeling some pride at having risen though not through his own exertions to the very summit of the organic scale and the fact of his having thus risen instead of having been aboriginally placed there may give him hope for for, for a still higher destiny in the distant future but we are not here concerned with hopes or fears only with truth as far as our reason permits us to discover it and i have given the evidence to the best of my ability we must however acknowledge as it seems to me that man with all his noble qualities with sympathy which feels for most debased with benevolence which extends not only to other men but to the humblest living creature with his god like intellect which has penetrated into the movements and constitutions of the solar system with all this exalted power man still bears in his body the frame the indelible stamp of his lowly origin we have a tailbone my friends think of it that's a vestigial organ you don't need a tailbone we don't have tails so this whole story that we have a common ancestry anybody who has done a course on evolution would know that man shares a common ancestry with uh, chimpanzees and bonobos um, or, or we always say that chimpanzees are, are our closest cousin and we are pretty amused to see them maybe they are also amused to see us anyway so it's good to celebrate darwin and on his birthday i think from 2011 it has become a unique celebrating day because on 2009 it was uh, the 200 years of darwin's anniversary and 150 years of writing the origin of species so it gained momentum that darwin's day should be celebrated as a day of celebrating science itself because if you look at it though we i am interested in mathematics or physics or anything but at the end of it we are all interested about our own selves why we are here and what can be more interesting than life itself and with devastation that covid has shown us if you had seen 
the newspapers in the COVID time, doctors were telling that the COVID virus is changing its shape because of selection pressures. They were evolving into new breeds, into new species. The original COVID was a one form of a virus, one species, while the Omicron is a different species. So you can see natural selection in action in front of your own eyes and it devastated us. So basic idea of biology possibly should be given to most people to know that we are, as Darwin called, in the midst of the war of nature. We are always at war. At this moment in your body and my body, our body, our immune systems are fighting bacteria and viruses and whatnot, some microbes which are even maybe unknown to science. So once we know such things that we are constantly at war, that would humble us and we would have gratitude for being alive. And that is why do science, think properly, be rational, be happy. Thank you.